Meet the North American Aviation XB-70 Valkyrie. It was the prototype version of the planned B-70 nuclear-armed, depenetration supersonic strategic bomber for the United States Air Force Strategic Air Command. Designed in the late 1950s by North American Aviation NAA, the six-engine Valkyrie was capable of cruising for thousands of miles at Mach 3, while flying at 70,000 feet. At these speeds, it was expected that the B-70 would be practically immune to interceptor aircraft, the only effective weapon against bomber aircraft at the time. The bomber would spend only a brief time over a particular radar station, flying out of its range before the controllers could position their fighters in a suitable location for an interception. High speed also made the aircraft difficult to see on radar displays, and its high altitude and high speed capacity could not be matched by any contemporaneous Soviet interceptor or fighter aircraft. The introduction of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s put the near invulnerability of the B-70 in doubt. In response, the United States Air Force USAF, began flying its missions at low level, where the missile radar's line of sight was limited by terrain. In this low-level penetration role, the B-70 offered little additional performance over the B-52 it was meant to replace, while being far more expensive with shorter range. Other alternate missions were proposed, but these were of limited scope. With the advent of intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs, during the late 1950s, manned bombers were increasingly seen as obsolete. The USAF eventually gave up fighting for its production, and the B-70 program was cancelled in 1961. Development was then turned over to a research program to study the effects of long-duration high-speed flight. As such, two prototype aircraft, designated XB-70A, were built. These aircraft were used for supersonic test flights during 1964-69. In 1966, one prototype crashed after colliding with a smaller aircraft while flying in close formation. The remaining Valkyrie bomber is in the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. In an offshoot of Boeing's MX-2145 manned boost glide bomber project, Boeing partnered with Rand Corporation in January 1954 to explore what sort of bomber aircraft would be needed to deliver the various contemporary nuclear weapons under development. At the time, nuclear weapons weighed several tons, and the need to carry enough fuel to fly that payload from the continental United States to the Soviet Union demanded large bombers. They also concluded that after the release of the bombs, the aircraft would need supersonic speed to escape the critical blast radius. The aviation industry had been studying this problem for some time. From the mid-1940s, there was interest in using nuclear-powered aircraft in the bomber role. In a conventional jet engine, thrust is provided by heating air using jet fuel and accelerating it out a nozzle. In a nuclear engine, heat is supplied by a reactor, whose consumables last for months instead of hours. Most designs also carried a small amount of jet fuel for use during high-power portions of flight, such as takeoffs and high-speed dashes. Another possibility being explored at the time was the use of boron-enriched SIP fuels, which improved the energy density of jet fuel by about 40%, and could be used in modified versions of existing jet engine designs. Zip fuels appear to offer sufficient performance improvement to produce a strategic bomber with supersonic speed. The Valkyrie was designed to be a high-altitude Mach 3 bomber with six engines. Harrison Storm shaped the aircraft with a canard surface and a delta wing, which was built largely of stainless steel, sandwiched honeycomb panels, and titanium. The XB-70 was designed to use supersonic technologies developed for the Mach 3 SM-64 Navajo, as well as a modified form of the Navajo's inertial guidance system. The XB-70 used compression lift, which resulted from a shock wave generated by the leading edge of the engine intake splitter below the apex of the wing. At Mach 3 cruising speed, the shock wave is bent back about 65 degrees, and the wing is superimposed on the shock system which is a pressure 40 pounds per square foot higher onto the aircraft than in front of the shock. The compression lift provided 5% of the total lift. Camera was added to the wing leading edge inboard of the folding tips to improve subsonic handling and reduce supersonic drag. The outer portions of the wings were hinged to pivot downward by 65 degrees, acting as a type of variable geometry wingtip device. This increased the aircraft's directional stability at supersonic speeds, shifted the center of pressure to a more favorable position at high speeds, and caused the shock originating at the intake splitter to reflect from the vertical tip surface giving additional compression lift. Like a number of other Delta Wing aircraft designed for supersonic speeds, the Valkyrie needed a feature to improve the pilot's view during nose-high low-speed flight and on the ground. An outer windshield and ramp, which could be lowered, was provided enabling viewing through the fixed cockpit windshield. With the ramp raised into its high-speed position, the forebody was more streamlined. A system that used 600 degrees Fahrenheit air from the engine compressors was used for windshield anti-ice and rain removal. The lower forward section included a radar bay, and production machines were to be equipped with a refueling receptacle on the upper surface of the forward fuselage. The XB-70 was equipped with six General Electric wide J93 GE3 turbojet engines, designed to use JP-6 jet fuel. 
The engine was stated to be in the 30,000 pound class, but actually produced 28,000 pound force with afterburner, and 19,900 pound force without afterburner. The Valkyrie used fuel for cooling, it was pumped through heat exchangers, before reaching the engines. To reduce the likelihood of auto ignition, nitrogen was injected into the JP6 during refueling, and the fuel pressurization and inerting system vaporized a 700 pound supply of liquid nitrogen, to fill the fuel tank vent space, and maintain tank pressure. The XB-70's maiden flight was on 21 September 1964. In the first flight test, between Palmdale and Edwards Air Force Base, one engine had to be shut down shortly after takeoff, and an undercarriage malfunction warning meant that the flight was flown with the undercarriage down as a precaution, limiting speed to 390 miles per hour, about half that planned. During landing, the rear wheels of the port side main gear locked, the tires ruptured, and a fire started. The Valkyrie first became supersonic, Mach 1.1, on the third test flight on 12 October 1964, and flew above Mach 1 for 40 minutes during the following flight on 24 October. The wingtips were also lowered partially in this flight. XB-70 No. 1 surpassed Mach 3 on 14 October 1965, by reaching Mach 3.02 at 70,000 feet. The first aircraft was found to suffer from weaknesses in the honeycomb panels, primarily due to inexperience with fabrication and quality control of this new material. On two occasions, honeycomb panels failed, and were torn off during supersonic flight, necessitating a Mach 2.5 limit being placed on the aircraft. The deficiencies discovered on AV-1 were almost completely solved on the second XB-70, which first flew on 17 July 1965. On 3 January 1966, XB-70 No. 2 attained a speed of Mach 3.05, while flying at 72,000 feet. AV-2 reached a top speed of Mach 3.08, and maintained it for 20 minutes on 12 April 1966. On 19 May 1966, AV-2 reached Mach 3.06, and flew at Mach 3 for 32 minutes, covering 2,400 mi in 91 minutes of total flight. A joint NASA-USAF research program was conducted from 3 November 1966 to 31 January 1967 for measuring the intensity and signature of sonic booms for the National Sonic Boom Program. Testing was planned to cover a range of sonic boom overpressures on the ground similar to, but higher than those anticipated from the proposed American SSD. In 1966, AV-2 was selected for the program, and was outfitted with test sensors. It flew the first sonic boom test on 6 June 1966, attaining a speed of Mach 3.05 at 72,000 feet. Two days later, AV-2 crashed following a mid-air collision with an F-104, while flying in a multi-aircraft formation. Sonic boom and later testing continued with XB-70A. The second flight research program, NASA NAS-4 to 1174, investigated control of structural dynamics from 25 April 1967 through the XB-70's last flight in 1969. At high altitude and high speed, the XB-70A experienced unwanted changes in altitude. NASA testing from June 1968 included two small veins on the nose of AV-1 for measuring the response of the aircraft's stability augmentation system. AV-1 flew a total of 83 flights. The XB-70's last supersonic flight took place on 17 December 1968. On 4 February 1969, AV-1 took its final flight to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for museum display, now the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Flight data was collected on this subsonic trip. North American Rockwell completed a four-volume report on the B-70 that was published by NASA in April 1972.